So basically, we have our restraints, objectives for the restraints we formulate, draw, find a feasible region. But then we go into the objective. We define what are we trying to do, maximize or minimize. Formulate a formula to maximize and minimize. Then substitute in the possible solutions that are given by the subject, the feasible region. And then finally, find the solution or the value that is the maximum or minimum. So let's look at an example. You have seen that it helps to study hard. You are, however, writing both science and mathematics control tests on the same day. You only have a total of 13 hours to study. And you have seen the following trend, though. For every one hour you study for mathematics, you can be assured of another 12% on that test. While for science, one hour will earn you 10% extra on the test. To cover all the work, you need to study at least five hours for each subject. Your average for the two subjects must be 60% for university admission. What is the optimal time to spend studying each subject for the test to get a maximum average for the two subjects? Okay, so at this point it's probably quite, quite difficult to know what the heck's going on. So we're going to break it down into what we're trying to do. First of all, we are going to draw. So we are going to have uh, a graph and on the graph we're going to have X's and Y's. Okay, these are the two products that I'm going to produce. Okay, or the and in this case, I am trying to decide how much time must I spend on studying each subject. So let's say X will be time studying maths, and we say Y is the time studying science. Now, with that being said, let's go into it. We're going to start with our restraints. Okay. What is restraining us? Well, let's read again. Okay. You have helps you study hard. You are writing maths and science on the same day. You have a total of 13 hours to study. Now what that means is that the time I spent studying maths plus the time I spent studying science must be less or equal to 13. Don't worry yet if you don't know how I get it. This is just a quick example to demonstrate how it works. But the time I spent doing both of those must be less or equal to 13. Second, the, um, for every one hour you spend studying mathematics, you can be assured of another 12%, and science, you can be assured of another 10%. That's not a restraint, yet, they're not saying we must get at least, or at the most, or anything like that. But to cover all the work, you need to study five hours for each subject. In other words, studying for maths must be more or equal to five, and studying for science must be more or equal to five. To cover all the work, you need to study at least five hours for each other. Your average for the two subjects must be 60%. Now, this one is a little bit difficult. And again, do not worry if you don't yet know what is um, how to get it. But let me quickly show you. Remember that for maths, I get 12% for every uh, hour I study. So if I study X hours, I'm going to have X times 12 on that test. That's how much I'll get for maths. So I want to, this is basically what I want to do. I want to take my maths mark plus my science mark and I want to divide it by 2. That will give me uh, the average for the, between the two of them. Okay. Now this is how I'll get my maths. Maths will be 12 for every hour. Science will be 10 for every hour. Which means I get that 10y divided, sorry that shouldn't be x, it should be y, 10y divided by 2. Now this must be at least 60%. So in other words I must have not less than but 
more than or equal to 60%. Now I'm just going to simplify this one a little bit and just div uh, distribute the 2 so I get 6x plus 5y is less bigger or equal to 60. Okay, so let, that was the first step, is to formulate the restraints. The second step is to draw these restraints. Now I've already drawn it to save some time on the video, let me show you. Here is the graph of these restraints. Let me uh, quickly demonstrate. So what you'll see is the first one x plus y less than or equal to 13 okay that graph and again don't worry I'll show you how to draw it is this one uh, let me show you this one x plus y is less or equal to 13 and what I just did was to cancel and let me use a black pen so you can see what I'm doing all I used was to cancel the part that I was not going to use and that's the top part okay the second one was X must be bigger than 5 and Y must be bigger or equal to 5 those are that's the red one and the purple one and they must all be bigger so I cancel this smaller part same goes here I cancelled the smaller part and the final one was this one that x 6x x plus 5y must be less than 60 and that one is this green one cancelled everything in this little white area that's remaining in here that area is now my feasible region and I've done what I needed to do in my next step comes the objective in my objective the first one was to define what am I trying to do well, you recall we wanted to maximize the average for the two subjects. So I'm going to maximize. Okay. Second step is to define the formula that I want to maximize. I want to maximize my average. Now I've already shown you a formula for the average. This is how we got the average. We wanted the average to be bigger or equal to 60, but we've already defined it. So we already have average is equal to the mark I get for maths plus the mark I get for science divided by 2 because it's the average. So I want to maximize the total but then I divide it by 2 to get the average. After I have that I must go and substitute the possible solutions. Now because I want to maximize I'm going to use the corners. Well, I always use the corners. They are the optimal, the possible solutions that will optimize. And because we want to maximize, it will probably be the top, the top ones. But we're not going to assume that. Okay. So we need to find those corners. This one, if I drew very nicely, will be 5 for x. And as I read it off and eight for y this one is eight for x and five for y it means, uh, uh, okay this one is six for x and five for y and that one is 
5 for x and 6 for y. Now with that in mind, those are the points we're going to substitute. So let's start by substituting a with 5 and 6. Okay, 12 times 5 is 60, plus 10 times 6 is 60, divided by 2, and I get exactly 60. You see, that would be sufficient to get into varsity, and if I wanted to have a social life, that's probably the choice you would choose. Okay, because now you're only studying 11 hours. Or you can spend the 11 hours a little bit differently. You can spend 11, 6 hours on maths, which gives me 6 times 12 is 60, uh, 72. Plus 5 times 10 is 50. Divided by 2 gives me 122. Divided by 2 is 61. Okay. That might be a little bit better, spending my time like that. Okay, only studying 11 hours but getting 61 on average. The next one is studying 8 hours on maths and 5 hours on science. Okay, you'll see, see I'm still using my graph. 8 hours on maths, 5 hours on science. 8 times 12 is 86. Sorry, 96. 96 plus 5 hours on science will give me 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, and that is divided by 2, which gives me 146 divided by 2 is 73%. Finally, what if I spent, sorry, 5 hours on maths and 8 hours on science? Obviously, it will be less than that because I get more when I spend more time studying maths. So, eight times twelve, uh, five times twelve is sixty. Eight times five, um, sorry, eight times ten is eighty. Divided by two, and I get sixty plus eighty is one forty. Divided by two is seventy percent. Now, with that being said. Our final part would be to find the optimal solution. Okay. So what is optimal? We'll say okay, spend that's now the one that gives me the highest solution, spend eight hours on maths and five hours on science.